Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be talking about Photoshop preferences, workspaces and layout. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Ba -da 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 How high can I go? Ah, that was my dance for today. So, this is part number four of my complete Photoshop training course. Now, if you want the rest of the videos and also all of the project files so you can actually work along with me, head over to photosincolor.com and have a look at that. So, today we are going to be talking about the basics of Photoshop and how to get it set up ready to work. This is for beginners. So, if you've already been using Photoshop for years, this might not be for you, but it might actually refresh some things for you because the preferences have changed over the years. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. So here we are on my screen just here and we're going to first of all open up Photoshop and this is what it actually opens up with right now. So it may look like this. This is a list of all of my um, images that I've been using. Now it's the first time you've opened it. This will be completely empty. But basically this is what I've been working on recently and I can have a different preview of this and I can see the different images. And first of all, let's open an image. Now, if you don't have any in here, you won't be able to select them. So you go file and you're going to go to open. Now, the other way of doing this is command O. Okay. And that's going to bring up this here. And the third way of doing this is you'll actually go to an image and you can just drag and drop it in. So we'll do that one today. We'll drag and drop it in. Now this is a JPEG. If you drop in a raw, raw file, Adobe Camera Raw will open up and I have tutorials about that coming soon. So here we are inside Photoshop and this is our image. So before we actually do anything on this image, let's set up Photoshop and see what we want to do with it. So first of all, we're going to go Photoshop and go to Preferences General. Okay, so we're going to just have a look at a few things within this that we might want to make some changes of. So first of all, inside general, I just leave everything the way that it is. It's pretty, it, it comes all set up. And in fact, most of the, these preferences come pretty well set up. However, go down to interface. Now, the original Photoshop over the years looked more like this, all very light colors. So you got this light color. Now you can change this, okay? The new one as default is this gray here. Now, personally, this is my favorite, but a lot of people aren't liking it, so they're liking the lighter one, so you can go back there. This for me, this brings focus to my image a lot more, so I prefer that. I just wanted to show where it is. The next thing that I want to show you is under file handling. So all these other things, just leave them. They're all fine. File handling. Now, a few things that you should look at here. Over on the side here, make sure a couple of things are selected. What you want to do is have save in background checked. Now, the reason for that is if you're working on something and you hit command S or you hit save. Now, some of the project files you, you have might take 10 minutes to save if they're huge files. So this could actually stop you from still working in Photoshop. Having this means you can keep on working and it just saves the document at that point that you hit save. Okay. So make that there cause it's going to speed things up for you and then all then have automatically save recovery information every 10 minutes. This basically is auto save. So Photoshop didn't used to have this, but it now does. And you can set how at what interval I have it at 10 minutes so that it's not always saving my work, but every 10 minutes is pretty good in case it crashes. Then it means that I only have to go back a maximum of 10 minutes of work, which is great. Okay, so the next thing that you would go to and the last thing I would say is down inside performance. So you have a few things in here. The first thing is memory usage. How much memory, RAM memory, do you want your computer to have? So I think around 75% of your RAM is good. This means that Photoshop can use all of 75% of your computer's power, but it'll keep 25% of things so that you can be processing other things. Now, I think that's a, a pretty good amount. You can boost it all the way to 100, but it may cause other programs to crash, so be careful of that. Then the next thing is history states. Now, this is vitally important. This basically means undo. So when, you've, when you will be editing inside Photoshop, you may 
especially as a new user, you may want to go back and undo things that you've done. Now, if you've got it set to say 10 um, or eight, it means that you can only go back eight steps and undo the last eight things that you do. So I would definitely suggest as a beginner to be up somewhere in the 50s. That's a good amount. Now, this will actually go all the way up to 1,000. It'll store all of that. But 50 is a pretty good mark. So having that set is really good. Once you've done that, hit OK, and that's going to save those preferences. Now, you're ready to get on and make some edits. So let's have a look at actually what is Photoshop and how do, what are all these different panels. Let's understand these. So on the left hand side here, this is your toolbar. Essentially gives you all of the tools that you'll be using inside Lightroom. Okay, things like you have this, which is your marquee tool, which means that you can select things. Okay, so it means that we could select this area. Okay, and if I hit Command J, it means that essentially if you watch, I can now move that part of the image. I'm not going to go into details about all the different things because I'm going to do a tutorial on each one. But essentially, this is where you have your different things. So you, you might be able to have a, a magic wand tool to make a selection here. As you can see, as I select all of this, I'm selecting all of the blues in the sky. So this is allowing me to kind of make different selections. And if I was to do this really quickly on this image, like so, it's not going to be perfect. But for example, OK, then you can see I've made that selection not going to do that but that's just to show you what is down here you've also got things like your brush tool so for example on the brush tool sorry let's just change this to a color that we can see and go in here so if i now am on the brush tool i can now brush on my image so that's the brush tool all sorts of different things down the panel so these are all the different tools that you're going to use now along the top these are all of your tool options. So in this section, it changes for each tool. So for example, if I was to come in and go to the marquee tool, it's going to give me this set of options up here. Whereas if I was going to go to the brush tool, you can see this now completely changes. So it's going to give me my size over this side here. So I can slide this around and I, make, I can make this really small. Okay. Or I can change my size and I can make it really big. Whereas if I click something completely different, like let's say the text tool, all of these items up here have now changed. If I click on here and I write um, Photoshop, it's not very interesting, but for example, now we have this up here and I can go in and I would be able to make any of the selections within my text. Sorry, so I'd actually come into the text over here. We'll get to that in a moment but I would be able to change the size over there, just like this. So this essentially will have all of your different options placed along the top for the different tools down the side. Now, on the other side over here, this is where we have lots of different elements. Now, the main thing here is your side panel, okay? And you've got different options that you have within here. So right now I have the navigator, which is placed along the top here, which basically means if I was to zoom in, it's going to show me with a red box where I am on my image and I can move around it like so, which is really great. I can also use the slider underneath it to zoom in and out. Now, I also have different elements that I can have inside this, like histogram that sits just in here. So you can see I can change things. The next one down, I have my color items going on and swatches, which are all here as well, which is absolutely fantastic for different elements. So for example, if I wanted to change my color of my pen, if I have my pen tool selected, I can now make it that color or I could select, say, purple. And now I'm going to draw in the purple color, which is really, really great. The next thing down here is adjustments. OK, in libraries. Now we're going to get to this in future tutorials, but just so that you can see where they are. For example, I can change my exposure like so. And I'm going to really boost the exposure of that just by clicking that button there. OK, so now we're going to come down to this section down here and I have some really important elements. For example, I've got layers, channels and paths. Layers, that's basically where all of the different layers that I create inside Photoshop are going to go inside here 
channels, which is RGB, that's quite advanced. We will do a tutorial on that in the future. And then paths, basically that uses what the pen tool does to create paths. But these are all sorts of different elements on the side. Now, if you don't see any of these elements, all you have to go is window, and then you can ask to look at that. So for example, let's go in and let's get rid of the adjustments. So these are my adjustments down here. If I turn that off, they're going to now disappear. But if I was to go window, adjustments, it's gonna put those back in there for me. Really, really great. Now, the next thing is we have columns. There's different columns on here and you can add different elements to this. So for example, I have my text elements which are in this side column just here and paragraphs. Now, this is where things get really exciting. You can, you can pop these columns in and out. So for example, I can expand all of these items which are essentially these thumbnails. But that can get very confusing because now I've got everything where I might just want to change my um, text, which would be down here. Instead of having this, I can close it and I can just open the text on the side here and I can actually click through each of these elements and open them separately, which makes things organized and really powerful. Now, so what if you wanted to move things around to create your own workspace? Well. It's amazing in Photoshop, you can do just that. For example, I have the text set over here, that's where I want it. Maybe I wanted my text to appear over here um, just above my adjustments. Well, all I have to do is pick this up and I can see the blue line appears and it's gonna move around. So if I get a blue line, it's gonna drop it in directly above there, just like so. Now, if I was to now take a hold of this, I can go and put it back to where it was before. What I might also want to do is I may want to add it onto the side within this panel. So I can pick it up and now I can hold it and the whole box goes blue and you can see now I've got color, swatches and character are all now different tabs. So you can see it's incredibly customizable what you can do inside Photoshop. So the next thing to look at is workspaces. The workspace is essentially absolutely everything we see. So up here is where you find workspaces. I have mine set to Ed Standard because I've built my own workspace. But if you go to the drop down here, we can see different things. You will currently have Essentials if you haven't changed anything. And so it looks just like this. And then for example, if you are a photographer, you might want to go to Photography and that's gonna give you different options in different places. But for example, if you were a motion graphics designer, you click on that, it's gonna change everything and give you all sorts of different settings. So again, once you know what you like, build whichever, whatever you want to have your different options in different places, and then you can just go down and you can have new workspace, and then you can just rename it and it will save everything for you. So that's the little walkthrough about those things, but the final thing to mention is all of your menu bars here. So essentially, a lot of these things work the same way as they would do in another program, okay? So you've got save, you've got export, okay? You've got new, you've got open. Inside edit, okay? We've got all sorts of different things that you might want to do. You've got some um, presets down here that you can build in, okay? You can add some different layers and then you've got image options. <clears throat> So we're gonna go through all of these things in the future, not in this tutorial, but you see you've got all sorts of different options in all of these areas. Now, if you've just opened up Photoshop for the first time and you're wanting to do something to an image, I would suggest open up an image, hit filter, and then go into the filter gallery, and within there, you can click on all sorts of different things and create all sorts of different wacky effects and it's gonna give you a little bit of a feel for it. Okay, so that there is a basic overview of Photoshop. I would recommend spending a little bit of time changing those preferences and the next thing is really learn about what those different panels are. You've got the tool panel on the left, you've got your options for your tools along the top and then you've got your side panel where you've got all sorts of information and different things that you can edit over there. So. Take a bit of time and learn all of those elements inside Photoshop. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.